What has been quite common lately is overuse of the QR codes. And as you can see, this is one of the scenarios I pulled out out of the public discussions in the comment section. And they're saying that even though it's very common now, particularly now rare, recently we went to sit down in a restaurant where we had just a QR code on a table. Super common thing, which I also seen in quite a few portfolios where designers would just jump and say, oh, how could we, let's say in a pandemic time, make everything more secure, reduce the touch points and actual physical touch points and they would just go with a QR code as a default. That of course has to be done right. And it highlights that symptom that not everyone still are able to jump in and just take on those solutions you give them with the new channels and just carry on. Now I'm gonna skip ahead because the main challenge I want you to solve going forward is this. Hey, welcome back. You might be new to this. You might have seen some of the UX project challenges we had on this channel and the awesome submissions I had today to review and learn from and, you know, have discussions on live feed. And this is so you can come up with better case studies, that you can test your newly learned skills, that you can apply the methods, take the real life challenges and gather that evidence to then convince a hiring manager that you can do that amazing UX work. And today I have a really interesting challenge and a mixture between customer experience and the user experience and using different channels to drive business objectives. And what I'm talking about is this problematic experience where a person went to a gas station or imagine a shop, maybe it's a local store near you. And they saw that the only way for them to check the price is to scan a QR code next to the actual product in that range, presumably it would pull up a web browser or maybe ask you to download an app and then the user would be informed exactly what the price is. And likely some of you already have your blood boiling at this point and kind of say, why would you even make such a mistake? And it's a really good question if that came into your head. So why would the business do that? And presumably on a very rough end, it would be because it's one, obviously poorly researched, designed and probably brashly solutionized rollout, right? So someone come up with an idea and they went with it. But still, as a UX designer, you kind of need to dig deeper and ask why. And you know, the five whys, the three whys, whatever you would employ, you need to get to the bottom of it because there is usually some sort of reason, even if it's badly executed. And in the retail space, if you would look into it and maybe do your own research, you will understand that there is such a thing as dynamic or variable pricing. So product could cost, let's say, differently in different locations at different times, if there is event, if there is seasonality, maybe unique stores have some sort of promos going on. It could be that because the price always changes, you need to have variable way and, you know, printed label for with a price tag, it wouldn't just do justice to it. It would probably cause a lot of inefficiencies in the operations. Now, the customer data capture is the next one. Pro maybe business wanted to capture more data of exactly who is buying what and maybe even track over time that that specific customer if that phone or that ID, that IP address, registration or profile would actually buy more Doritos. And then another bit which could have caused this rollout or this pilot of source is the region or culture specific technology. For example, in Asia, if you would just take a trip right now, you realize that QR codes are king. In, let's say, other parts of the world, it's hardly that. But that's another thing. Perhaps, let's say, if you live somewhere and QR codes are a natural way to solve problems and it's accessible enough because everybody's are used to it, well, then you could argue that maybe it's a good idea. And there could be, of course, a plethora of other bits of why that happened. And you immediately now should start thinking what you could be doing, but research probably would be that because certainly nothing is as simple, but of course, as UX designers, we're trying to find, you know, the actual, the simplest explanation to things. And one of the things to highlight as well in this board, which I'm gonna share the link off, is that I added a few bits. For example, that there is a lot of qualitative evidence or a lot of, I guess, evidence by proxy, which you can get at least 
inspired of, but also pick up the pain points and kind of build up your research case for that, you know, design solution as you go through this challenge. But there is, let's say, almost 2000 comments. There is a lot of examples exactly why this could be happening, because maybe you haven't worked in retail. Let's say I did design a lot of things in the retail and manage teams in the retail space. So I understand all the dynamics and how not so obvious things become very standard in retail specifically industry. And let's presume that I'm a business stakeholder and I want to explain to you that this is why I want you to kind of come in now and please save my business or save that, you know, specific journey in the stores because so many customers are complaining. There is a very thin line between customer and user experience and their needs and the business needs. And usually it comes down to that the customers require ease of use, time saving, affordability, delightful and satisfactory type of service. That then drives customer satisfaction scores, that then drives their loyalty and how many returning customers you have because that's what retail businesses could thrive on and rely on. They need people to come back and choose that specific retail store as default. So that ultimately could be one of those big goals. And on a business side, the margins are razor thin. So you always need to optimize your operations so they're much more efficient, reducing the cost of running it, making it much more smooth and maybe have less personnel or automating things, adding technology where it's needed. And that then meets the increase of revenues from the customer side and hopefully increases the profits for the business so they can reinvest and hopefully make better decisions with a new projects. Of course, there's a lot of other factors you can put in yourself as you approach this challenge. So how might we actually introduce that variable pricing and help out that business, but make it actually work for our users so that their needs are answered and they're actually happy to do it in the means the business gives to them. Could you take this and make something better? Now, some of the additional considerations is the segmentation, because in retail space, your customer could be absolutely anyone. Who could you isolate? Who could you incrementally approach and maybe have a plan that your project is gonna focus only on the type of user or customer, or maybe you're gonna approach them all. That type of thing you need to understand from UX strategy perspective and make that decision. And to follow that is inclusion and accessibility is super important. You need to consider your temporary, situational and permanent user needs because you, it could be elderly, it could be people who cannot access tech in a way you want it. It could be a lot of different needs from, again, temporarily situational permanent. This is one of the projects where inclusion and accessibility could play a vital role, but it's your choice if you wanna take that angle. I would personally, because it's would result in a, such a strong case study where you can actually you know, impress some hiring managers. Now, next one is cultural and regional dependencies. For example, Certain technologies, again, being more ingrained in daily lives of certain users across the globe. Behavioral design elements, how could you change the behaviors? For example, dropping a QR codes is such an abrupt and demanding way for someone to buy and shop and be informed. You would need to reflect how could you gradually, incrementally deliver that vision of the new ways? And also what would be the right time and place for the users to engage with your solution. That's the only way you can build new habits and allow you know, users to be happy as we go. And of course, as usual, I'm gonna give you a few tools to help out. There's three specific steps. One is to start with drafting a hypothesis. It's just easier to follow exactly if you start it on the right note, how you carry it on, how you actually measuring the things. And then of course, make a plan and get going. I added a few notes from other challenges as well. Maybe it's gonna spark a few ideas of things you could be doing, let's say storyboarding the vision, let's say once you get to it and things of that nature. You can get inspired a little bit from these steps. And of course, just get to work. And one more tool to highlight before I run away is the Double Diamond 2.0 or Systemic Design Framework, which you could potentially use in this challenge. And I would love for you to actually use it and reflect and set your UX plan based on this uh, new framework. Because then you can start with the actual vision, think about connections and relationships, the leadership, the storytelling aspects, continuing the journey, and all the different steps, which is continuous iteration. Because in the retail space, continuous continuous iteration and a deep systems thinking, a deep service design approach 
to these challenges to kind of think holistically is essential. You cannot just drop a simple touch point and hope that down the road where thousands of touch points potentially could kind of work out for your customers or you know in the business in the end. So you need to think holistically and I feel like it's a perfect case to apply this specific double diamond 2.0 and that was really the reason for this challenge. And I feel like I dumped a lot of information on you. Make sure to check out the link. Now to summarize the challenge, if you need a case study in your portfolio for a research, do a research. If you want to end to end, do end to end. Whatever contributes to your portfolio to get that next position or makes you, you know, test your skills and learn from it. Deadline is as usual six weeks and that would be roughly Sunday the 6th of July 2023. And if you're watching it later, it still stands. Still do this challenge. You can join the Discord community to discuss, get help at any point. And of course, make sure to submit your entries to hello at theexperience.com before the deadline. And shortly after, I'm going to review that on a live stream where people can get your ideas in. And I'm going to walk through each case study as fast as possible so we can actually go and explore what everyone's thinking and what sort of case studies are there. Make sure to check the link down below, commit to this challenge, and I'll see you in six weeks.